It's been a few days since I've been able to do a video for you and I wanted to show you uh, where I'm at and a few things that I've added more of an update than actually doing much in the way of modeling. Um, this is roughly where I left off before and what I've done is I've taken these little things that I think will probably be lights and I've decided I would put them on there so we can get a nice little glow on the sides and you can see there's a big hole here because I've I've worked on the door this will be the front here and so I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the things I've done and talk about about them first of all I decided this is what I was going to do for feet I feel like it's a little bit of a cop-out but really there's so much going on and so much to do that uh, I just wanted to do something easy so if I bring in like this temporary floor here this temporary ground uh, this is going to be the moon surface this is how it would sit or these would sink into the sand or whatever would be would be there so that's not really going to be the surface but you know so as you can see this is just a cylinder I've done my usual pretend thread kind of thing and I'm I'm gonna just leave the feet as they are like that all right the next thing I want to show you is the door so what I did is I took this piece I made sure I had another one here so that in case I didn't like it I would be uh, able to go back and I've done this and so what I did is I just brought in a cylinder Now I've joined some pieces but I made sure I just I did a boolean through here and I had a cylinder here and then I had another piece I brought this in as a UV sphere so I'll just really quickly do some of that let's see if I can grab just that it's center my cursor there okay uh, I brought in a UV sphere I don't remember what I used but I'll use something like 20 and 10 and I took that rotate X 90 scale it down I'll get the approximate size there and uh, look from the side and we'll chop off the back so I'm in wireframe B and box select scale that in the Y to flatten it out so I did something like that and pulled it back right so I'd have that I'll just move it forward and then I took this point and I got rid of that and then I took this and I brought it back and I'll close it off for the time being and then I would have I guess beveled this control B and put a few segments in there just to smooth it out and okay so we got that let's hide that for the moment have a look in a separate section okay so let's bring that back there so I've got that and then what I may have done is brought in a new cylinder or maybe just copy that and shift D and scale it in a little bit P to break it out take that piece and extrude it back so it's like that and then E come in and I'm going to focus on this stuff here so you can see that let's uh, shift H okay I'm just going to work on this piece right here I've got I'm gonna slide that back scale it out a bit and then I said okay let's make that kind of turning handle so I scaled that in like this I extrude it back scale it in extrude it back F to make a face let's bring that stuff back there okay so this piece here this face I would just, I'm just gonna move that out of there in fact I could probably get rid of it and I'll take this I'll move it back just a little bit okay so back to this piece then I would have taken that and beveled those edges there and bevel this edge of course it's important to take the whole thing and alt in recalculate outside and that, that's okay so this I'm gonna control one to put one subdivision and shade smooth and I'm gonna do the same on that and shade smooth come in here select that face eye to inset that should flatten that out and then do whatever you want uh, in there so then what I would have done is created that handle and I may have to deepen this and it probably actually would so I'm going to select back there and control plus a bunch of times till I get out to here and sometimes you need to turn that off for the moment control minus and just pull it back further in 
Okay, 3D cursor is still there, so what I'll do is I'm going to bring in, I guess, maybe a, just a cube, and we'll try this, scale it down. And just get a cube like that. And uh, get the size you like. Select the sides here, E and SX, and come out. And then take these faces, push them down in a bit more. Take the whole thing, just play with it until you get a size that, that works for you. So the shading is off, so recalculate outside. All right, I'm going to Shift H on that thing. And I'll get rid of these here. In fact, I'm, I'm gonna take that piece and extrude it down. Get rid of that face. And those faces and then I could just apply a bevel modifier I'll bring it up to 3 and 0 0.01 maybe and shade smooth and if I really cared about those I could come over and under geometry switch the miter outer to arc voltage bring that back so we're starting to get what we need turn on the subdivision all right that's a little bit wide for me so that kind of thing that's how i did that add a few bolts to that you can use the spin tool and then i just created some pipes all right and i used my typical thing that i always do for the thread and i angled these i wanted them coming off here with a little rectangle with a an indent in there or an inset so i put one up at the top one there one there and then uh, so i'm going to, to i'm going to delete those that's basically how i did that all right, actually, I won't delete it yet. And then just to create the, the window part, uh, I just selected. And I may have used more polys than this uh, for my UV sphere. Uh, you could uh, take that, hide inset, and delete those faces. And you get something very similar to, to the other one. Okay, and this is just a cube that I cut out a piece. And I put a little sphere in, I did a boolean. And the idea is, I didn't, I mean, there is a, a good amount of detail on this, but I'm going to do more on in Substance Painter. In fact, I may even remove these and do these bolts just in Substance Painter. Put a little bolt in there, put a bolt on here, you know, and various things there. So I didn't want to do too much. And I'm going to do more stuff on here in Substance Painter and some text. And so that's that's basically how I did the door. All right, so that gives us the feet, those little things, the door. Um, what else can I show you? I'll show you just the back platform. I originally started with this near the front, and I grew quite frustrated with it. And uh, so I made this, and let's see if it's if there's any more to it. Ah, okay. I thought I did uh, a better join here. I probably would do that. I didn't know if I was even going to use it, but before I deleted it, I decided I'd throw it on the back. Um, I liked parts of this, and then I said, look, if you were, like, on another planet, you were standing on here, if you leaned over here, you would fall right off. Like, how reasonable is that? And then I said, well, I'm, I'm, all gonna, I'm not going to get rid of it yet. So I left that. But for the front door, I wanted something quite simple. And so what I came up with was this ramp. And what I've done is just created a bar. All right. I used a plane, and I just rounded these two vertices here and I put another piece on here okay I just take take some of the curve and I expand it and I did this and the ramp itself is is this whole thing and I've joined it all right this is a rounded rectangle and for the inside I did my usual thing I'll do and I'll just show you that real quick in case anybody doesn't know about that now it does end up using a lot of polys and ideally you would probably do this in a texture but basically it's like this all right you get a plane here I'm just gonna move it over here and uh, scale it in the so in the y so it roughly roughly looks like it right okay so you had that select the vertices shift control b pull i like five so it's rounded like that good select it all i to inset and then you just have to be careful when you inset that you don't cross any of the vertices so you could do that and then if you needed more you could always just s to scale so you know something like that and uh, delete those faces so there it is and then um 
just to make sure you have enough. Uh, give it some thickness here. Select the edges and Control B to pull, and you know, give it give it a bevel, something like that. And then I brought in as a separate object a plane. Uh, it's going in there. So let's do it here. It didn't do it. Okay. Shift S cursor to selected. Bring in a plane. Scale it to fit on the inside. Scale it in the X there. And then sort of make it so that I've got squares. I'll do that. that those are square enough. Select the whole thing. Right click. Subdivide. And subdivide it a couple of times. I don't know how many I did. I'll, do, I'll just do four there. Control F. Poke faces. Control F tries to quads and with that selected press I twice to inset twice so that you get these individual areas and then delete and you get that okay I may not have done it enough and then you can use solidify or just extrude a little bit uh, you can delete the bottom faces if you wanted to I'll do that just for the heck of it and see how it shows up shade smooth yeah I probably should have made them a little thinner but that's basically how I would do that I did a little inset. I may or may not keep that. But to, to do the attachment, the idea is this. I'll just show you underneath here. Right? There's a bolt, and then there's this piece. And so what can happen here is I would, so I would come in here, select something like this, and bring my 3D cursor there, and then switch over to 3D cursor and select, look from the side. And now my pivot is there, and I just R to rotate. So that can just go down to the... To the surface of whatever and then it's just a ramp again you know keeping in mind if this is the moon what's the gravity one sixth or something so uh, it doesn't need to be very sturdy or anything you just walk right up that ramp i didn't want to do a lot more bars and railings and 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 have too much of this kind of stuff i was thinking about a big wrap around and uh, that looks fine but not in my particular idea all right so then i said okay it's time to start looking on the inside but to tell you the truth this is looking more like a sort of like a chip wagon or some kind of a confectionery outdoor you know fast food thing i said that would be actually kind of funny but uh, you know you couldn't really w go up and order a hot dog and lift your space helmet up or you know, whatever your visor so i've just done some quick things on the inside that are block outs some of them may stay so for example something like uh, fluorescent lights up here uh, these may or may not stay uh, uh, i'm not sure but uh, they, may, they give me a starting point um, I, I was thinking that on the inside i would have uh, a computer monitors of some sort here let's um it's not joined together if it, let's let's just focus on that very simple for the time being maybe i just have something on there either this is the actual model i would use or or not i'm not sure um but uh something like that or maybe they're gonna they're gonna be on the sides i don't know yet and then i also did something like this and I said, okay, let's start populating it with something um, and see how I feel about them. And I'm not sure how I feel. I just want to get a sense of where stuff would go. So I've got just these bars here and I've got just, you know, rectangles, you know, extruded in type thing. And I got the, these would all be clear plastic. And these would, these look a little bit more like, I don't know, like masonry jars or whatever you call them. So I'll make them actually look a little bit more sci-fi, but not a lot of detail. Basically plastic, I would have a bottom and a top, maybe a little bit of sci-fi you know shape to them uh maybe a little bit taller but i had some I have some issues with hitting the sides and, and stuff so they got to be relatively small but maybe a little bit taller and maybe not this many they're a little close to the wall and there's something else here i'll tell you about that it may go down there as well so this would like i say would be clear plastic and maybe white or whatever maybe there's going to be some buttons on them i'm not sure but with you know very soil and some plants inside them so just trying to get a sense of how i would populate the inside of this um and uh, let's see i don't know if there is any shelving really uh and then uh or like, like computers or something on the wall i'm thinking i'll do something down here again this is a block in uh something here and something here and probably up on the sides some pipes or cables 
Uh, and that's going to be about it because I'm not well, and, and I, I should say that I will also block off this door with some kind of um, uh, UV sphere with, that's simple. Maybe just bolts or something in, in a window or, or I don't know, maybe not even the window so that this kind of stuff doesn't show. Um, and, and maybe shorten this and have the same stuff here and here and a few other pieces of technology i've got a couple of ideas and some like i say some wires or cables or pipes um and on the floor i'm going to have like a metal grate but that's mostly going to be done in texturing um and lighting and maybe a little bit of stuff on here you know a couple monitors or whatever and that's it because i'm not going to do a lot of rendering from the inside there might be one but it's mostly going to be like like this all right so that's where we're at right now so if you were modeling along with me and you wanted to do something pretty similar like hopefully you could handle the door and some pipes and something like this ramp if, if you like this style it's very easy to make these feet are obviously easy to make and then just throw a few a, f a few shelves in inside here i will come back of course and and either model along with you or show you updates of, of what i've done and explained how i did it we're already on the fifth i think video of this and the plan after that is as you as you can see here i've assembled the, uh, pretty much everything into um collections and i will be using probably some instancing so this is an instance of this to cut down on polys a little bit uh, because i'm already up at uh, where am i at here well i've got that human there too but you know we're getting into uh, a third of a million and my machine will start chugging along pretty soon and i have to texture this so i'm going to start separating it out uv unwrapping it and using the udim method so i can put um as you know as much as i want on uv maps so i can texture it mostly in substance painter but i'm not i, I can't spend forever on on doing this um otherwise it, it would probably it would take me six months to do it and i got to do it in about three videos all right so some of it i'll do on my own some of it i'll show you and hopefully you'll still be interested in sticking with me to the end result of this because uh, i am enjoying it and i hope you are too i will be back very soon with another update or modeling video and uh we'll see you then